Hello, I want to do another question that uses maps and sets just to show you how useful they can be. And of course, you don't have to use maps or sets to do this question. You can even argue that it can be done faster or it will run faster if you just use arrays. But it's really just so much more convenient to be able to use maps and sets and it makes the code so much simpler. And I always feel like the simpler my code is, the less likely it is for me to make a mistake. And that's why I like them so much. Now onto the problem. It is a frequency count problem with a bit of sorting. What do I mean by frequency count? Um, let's just scroll down to the sample input and output because the problem is easy enough to explain using the input and output. In this question, you are given a bunch of items and for each item, you have to keep track of how many of that item was given to you. So here on each line, the first word is the name of the item and the number here is just the number of that item that was given to you. Now, you may receive an item more than once. For example, you got Furby twice. You got four the first time around and you got one after that. So you get a total of five Furbies and you have to keep track of this. And what the question is asking is you have to list the items that you have in order of their frequency. So um, Kirby shows up first because you have 10 Kirbys. Now, if two items have the same count, like Elmo and Furby, you have to display them in alphabetical order. Now, my plan to do this question is pretty simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mapping from the names of the items to the frequency. So Furby will map to four. And of course, I will update this to five when I get the uh, second Furby. Elmo will go to five, Kobe goes to 10. So this is going to be the first map. And once I have this, I'm going to reverse the mapping. So I'm going to make another mapping that goes 10 to Kirby, 5 to um, Kirby, and also 5 to Elmo. Now, you can't, map this, um, you can't map a number twice. Like you can't map one object to two different things. So we can't map five to both Furby and Elmo. So we, what we have to do is we have to map five into a set, which will contain Elmo and Furby. And once I have this map, I'll just go from the top one by one. And I'm going to output Kirby 10, followed by Elmo five and Furby five. Now this set must be sorted. So I have to make sure that I put Elmo before I put Furby. And I'm going to show you how to, do that, uh, how to do that as well. So that is the general idea. And now I'm going to start the code. Okay, so what do we need? We need to read in the number of cases. I'll start with that. in cases equal to in dot next in uh, let's have a for loop plus plus okay so each case is a different set of items okay um the first thing i read is going to be the number of items and then another for loop mm. Okay, so I'm now going to get four lines. Well, whatever items is, uh, I have to read um, the string and a number. Okay, and now we're going to put them inside a map. Plus, we're going to need a new map for every case. So let me make that now. Uh, it's going to be a map from a string to an int. Hash map string integer hash map equal to new hash map. Okay, done. Now, all right. So the, I think the way I did this in the last video was doing this. Uh, let me write it up. So if this, uh, if you can find the string, so let's say you put in Furby, Furby's in there, and you found Furby again, um, that means it already exists. So what you have to do is you have to update the value. 
by one, right? So you probably say hm put um, name and then hm get name plus one. So the idea here is that you already have Furby 4 in there. So what you do is you're going to put Furby again, and this time you're going to get 4 out using hm.getName. You're going to get 4, you add 1 to it. Well, actually, no, you don't add 1, you add count, sorry. Um, because that's the count. And you will update Furby with the new value. If it doesn't exist, then what you have to do, you just simply um, put name... Uh, can count okay so that's the standard way of doing it but you can guess that it's pretty common that you want to update a value in map for example we wanted to update for before to for b5 so they added a new uh, method called get or default uh, to make this easier to write but what happened is I don't even need to check if name exists in the map. What I have to do is just this. Let me show you. Um, HM put name. So here's the thing. I'm going to modify the mapping. I'm, I'm going to change Furby. Uh, but how I do it, well, I have to get what Furby is, right? So right now I know Furby is 4. So here the command is get or default okay what this method will do is it will try to get name from the map and if it exists it will give you that value so if if you try to get Furby and Furby's there you're going to get four but if it doesn't exist you need to give it a second parameter that's the default value if the name, um, if the item you're looking for doesn't exist in the map yet, you're going to get this default value return instead. So you're going to get zero, which is what we want. Because if, a, if the item exists, then please give me the number mapped to it. If it doesn't exist, then I'm just going to use zero plus count because that means that's the first time I see this item. So when I get Elmo, Elmo doesn't exist yet, I'm going to get uh, zero. So I'll just put in Elmo with um, 0 plus 5, which is 5, because that's um, on the second one here, I'm going to get 0. 0 plus 5, I'll get 5. So I hope that is clear enough. We can probably give this a test run. So I'm just going to print out the map here. Let's copy the input. Okay you can see that it is working properly. So we got ML5, Furby5, Kirby10, uh, Fun Fun 1, Fun Fun Game 1. You may also notice that the map stores the keys in alphabetical order. Um, when I say keys, uh, that's the left-hand side of the map. You know, like you got Furby4, ML5, Kirby10, the strings, the one on the left side is the keys and the one on the right is called the values so they may uh, that will show up later as well so mapping is sorry a hash map is a mapping from key to value um where was i oh sorry yep um you may notice that this is sorry the keys are in increasing order but this is not always guaranteed because a hash map will just store the mapping you can't tell it to uh, keep track of the order as well. Uh, we can probably try to mess that up. Uh, let me run this. Okay, let's try. Mm, I'm not sure. A A5, B B5, A B5, B A5, E E5. Okay, as you can see here, I put in A A B B A B B A E E and the order here, the keys, they're not in increasing order. They're not in alphabetical order because you, you would have A, 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 B, uh, B, A, B, B if it was in uh, alphabetical order, right? It is also not in order of entry because obviously I put in A, A first and sorry, A, A, B, B, A, B, sorry. I put in A, B before I put in E, E, but 
AE still shows up before AB. Now there is a way, well not the way, but there is another structure that you can use if you want to preserve the alphabetical order that is called a tree map instead of hash map. So we have to modify both sides. Now if we try this again, uh, what was it? AA5, BB5, uh, AB5, BA5, BE5. That is now in alphabetical order. You can also um, preserve the order of insertion. So it will be sorted according to when you insert the element. Um, so that, is one, that one is called link hash map. Okay, run that. Um, just do A, B, C, D. All right, let's do A, D, 5, E, 5, A, 5, B, 5, C, 5. See how it preserves the order? D, E, A, let me go up a bit. D, E, A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C. Okay, so there are three, um, these are the three different kind of maps that you can use in Java and depends on, depending what you want to happen like you want to sort according to the keys or you want to sort according to the order of um to when they come in when they were inserted you can choose whichever you like you can use hash map tree map or a link hash map sorry i'm just thinking that um it doesn't actually matter what map you use for this um part because all i care about is that i have a mapping from the items to the number so I'll just leave it at um, I'll just leave it as link hash map. That's that's okay. Of course, if you care about performance, then a hash map should be faster than a link hash map or a tree map because well, a hash map doesn't really care about the order. They don't have to maintain any order. So that's something you want to keep in mind. Um, now, once we have the mapping from item to the frequency, we now want to reverse it, right? Um, so we've done this, now we're gonna do this. So I'm gonna need a mapping and this time it will be sorted. I want a mapping which is sorted because I want to go from the top. I want to start from Kirby 10, followed by Elmo and Furby. So I want to sort the left hand side. I want to sort the keys in, de in decreasing order. And that means I'm going to use a tree map. It's going to be a tree map mapping an integer to a string. Well, as I showed you earlier, you can't map an integer to two different strings. You can't map five to both Elmo and Furby, which means that we have to make a set. So if you have two items with the same frequency count, like um, both Elmo and Furby are five, you gotta be able to make a set of these items. Um, and Furthermore, we want the items to be sorted alphabetically because when we print it out, um, we want to show Elmo before we show Furby, right? So instead of just mapping from an integer into a string, we're going to map from an integer into uh, to a tree set of string. So not just a hash set because a hash set is not um, sorted. I want to sort it automatically as I insert into the set. This is what I'm going to use. Okay, and let's start filling it in. Now, to fill it in, it means that you must be able to traverse through the um, original map, the HM that we have here. There are several ways that you can do this, but I'm just going to show you the two methods that I use the most because I'm not really familiar with all the other ones. The first approach is by going through the key set of the map. So remember that we are going through this map and we're going to convert this map into this map in a way, as in Furby 5 will become 5 Furby. When I said I'm going to traverse through the key set, that means I'm going to go through the keys, the left hand side. So I can actually tell HM, the map, to give me that set. Um, the way we do that is by calling hm.keyset. 
So this is going to give me a set with Furby, Elmo and Kirby. Okay, so if I do a for each loop like this, whoops, whoops, whoops. S is going to take each value in that key set. So if I want to get the value, then I just go hm get s. So remember, there are no indices in a map. As in, you can't say get 0, get 1, get 2. Because 0 is not being mapped to anything. You got a mapping from Furby to 5, Elmer to 5. There's no 0 to something, right? It's not an array. So you can't use numbers. If you want to call dot get, you have to give it a string. Okay, so this is how it's different to an array, it's different to an array list. You can maybe pause the video and play around with this if you're not comfortable with it. But basically, hm.getS will give me the right hand side, will give me the value. And of course, s is the value. And now I have to put this inside the tree map. So I'm going to do tm put the value first, so um, hm.getS and then s. Okay, this is wrong because s is just a string, but uh, this is actually a um, tree set. So I have to do something extra here. I can probably use get or default again, but I'm just going to use contains key for now. So I'm going to ask tm. Um, okay, so remember right now we're looking at, let's say, Furby5. So I'm going to ask TM, just the second mapping. Hey, TM, do you already have a 5 in there somewhere? So how do I do that? If TM contains key, HM, get S. So HM, get S will give you the number here. Of course, S is the string on the left hand side, the key. If you already have a mapping from whatever number like five to something, that means there's already a set there, then I'll just give me that set. So tm get hm dot get s and add s to it. Add that string to it. So if you already have a five, then add Furby to it. Right. Um, if you don't then what we'll do, just get rid of that brackets, else, uh, this time I do need brackets, tm, put, um, actually, probably gonna make a set outside of it first, so, tree set string, tem equal to new tree set, and then I'll say temp at s, and I'm gonna put, hm get s and associate it with temp. Okay, that should refer to mapping. You can probably test the code again at this point. Well, actually, we can do that. Let's just output um, tm and see what it looks like. Save that. Um, copy, paste. See how it's 5 Elmo, Furby, and 10 Kirby. Now, here's the thing though. Um, this is sorted, but it is sorted um, from the smallest number to the biggest number, from 5 to 10. That's not what we want. We want to output stuff from the biggest number, 10, to 5. So we have to reverse the sort. And how did we do this in the previous video? Don't know if you remember. You basically give uh, with the constructor. You tell you tell it how to sort. Um, you give it collections dot um, reverse order. Yeah. Okay. Now let's run it again. Um, right. See how it's now ten Kirby and then five Elmo Furby and this set here is sorted as well in alphabetical order, which is what we want. Okay, the final thing we have to do 
is we have to output it. So the first thing we have to output is the number of item. That's easy enough. Um, it's just going to be the size of the hash map. So HM, not TM, not the second one, but the size of the first map. So um, HM dot size. And then we have to go through the tree map. So we have to traverse the tree map again. We have to traverse another map. And I'm going to use the second method now. Um, this is the first way of doing it, as in have a for loop that goes through the key set of the map. And the second method is going to use lambda notation. You saw a bit of lambda notation in the uh, in previous videos. And here is again. The map I want to traverse is TM. So uh, I need more space. So let's go down a bit. Okay, TM for each. For each is, um, how do I explain it? <laughs> Basically, you have to give it a function. Um, and in this function, uh, it will have two input parameters. Well, because when you have a map, you have two things, right? You have the key and you have the value. So the idea here is that I'm going to give this for each function a function. Well, you pass a function as a parameter. That's going to take two inputs, the key and the value. Uh, let's write that down first. Um, key and value, and then you just write whatever you want there. Um, like whatever you want to do with the key and value, you do it there. So what do we want to do? Uh, we want to output the value and then the key, right? Um, because ten is actually the key here. Uh, ten five five. That's actually the key. And Kirby, Elmo, Furby are the values. Um, so we're going to output the key, sorry, the value, uh, followed by space, and then ah, oh, but the value is actually a set. Hmm. So you have to actually go through the set. Um, all right. So it's a set of what? It's a set of string. Okay. So for string s in v, it's a set of strings. I want you to output the key, sorry, um, the key or the value, sorry. I want to output S followed by the key. So going here, uh, let's just say we're traversing through this TM here. So uh, this is the key, that's K, that's a value, that's V. Oh, well, it's actually a set. What I'm doing here is that for each key, or for, for each pairing, um, go through the strings on the set. That's this for loop here. Whoops, whoops. Don't know what happened there. That's the for loop here. Okay, and then for each element of the set, I want you to print out that element. I want you to print out the string, followed by the key, which is five. So you're going to go to the first uh, mapping. You're going to get Kirby, the only element in the set. You're going to print out Kirby 10. Then you're going to print out Elmo 5 and then Furby 5. Let's hope that that works. Um, let's try it out. Can copy. Whoops, no, that's the output. Copy this. Okay, I get 3, Kirby 10, Elmo 5. For B5, 2, fun, fun, 1, fun, fun, game 1. I'm going to try submitting this first, just in case I made a mistake. Um, it's a pretty long code, well, longer than uh, the other videos so far. I mean, once you get used to maps, this is all very simple, really, but um, I'm going slow at it because I'm trying to explain as many things as I can. Uh, some of you probably find this boring. Let's see if it works. Yes, okay, it got accepted. Good, so it does work. I um, guess let's just go through the whole code again. Uh, where's the example? Okay. 
So one more time from the top. We um, we start the question by making this map here. So you mapping the items to the frequency. That's what we did here. Again, doesn't matter if you want to use link hash map, tree map, hash map, doesn't matter. Um, this will create the mapping and well, at this point, I hope you remember that tree map will sort the key. A link hash map will sort the key according to the order that comes in. Sorry, tree map will sort the key according to the alphabetical order. Um, you learn about get or default, which is useful when you want to, uh, when you, well, there's no mapping yet and you want to put a value in there. Then we made the second mapping, this one here. And for the second mapping, we simply reverse it. So it's going to be mapping from a uh, from an integer to a tree set. And I'll show you here the first way of traversing through a map. So this is by using hm.keyset. So you traverse through a set of the keys. And finally, once we have that map, we're going to go through it again. And we're going to print them out. So we have to do this separately because when we put it in um, when we put the things one by one inside the tree map we do that so that we sort it right uh, is because this is a tree map it will be sorted according to the key which is the integers and rem remember that we reversed it using collection dot reverse order finally the second um, traversal here uses another method it uses the for each uh, function which uses lambda notation. So this is another function. And given a key and value mapping, this is what I will do to them. I'll just kind of print them out. So there are two ways of traversal. Personally, I'm used to the uh, top one because I, I mean, I've been using Java for a few years and this is new to me when I learned Java. I, I mean, I, I did this so many times, it's just like, this is what I memorized, but I'm trying to get myself to do this more and more like the lambda notation because it's just so much easier to write. You can see it, right? It's just, this is nicer compared to writing that. And I just think lambda is just, uh, just the way to go in the future. But uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty long video, I guess. I don't know um, how long it's been, but it's pretty complicated if you've I haven't done maps before in Java. That's why I'm going through it very slowly. And if you're already good with maps, then yeah, this is boring, easy stuff. But if you're new to maps, you're new to traversing through maps, this is very good practice. Um, like I said in the um, in the other video, I use maps a lot. Well, especially in um, a lot of these um, programming, uh, in these coding questions, you get to use maps a lot. So. Really, uh, you want to do well in a competition or just in coding in general, um, get used to using maps. Okay, I think that is long enough for today and I'm going to stop there. So thank you for watching.